I'm the storyteller and my stories must be told. I have many stories, tales for both the young and old. I have many voices to describe many places. Many names have I and many faces. In Russia I am Ivan, in Sweden I am Jan. In Germany I'm Johan, in America I'm John. From my many travels I have gathered these tales to teach you good sense when all else fails. Sometimes there are tears, sometimes there is laughter, but always I happily ever after. Long ago and far away, nestling among green fields and woodlands, there once stood a village. Here, in a very old house, surrounded by trees, lived a young girl called Rosemary, with her cruel stepmother. While the other girls in the village laughed and played, Rosemary's stepmother made her stay at home and work from dawn to dusk. Rosemary was a very simple, kind-hearted girl who always did what she was told. No matter how hard she worked, her stepmother was never satisfied. Rosemary spent all day cooking, cleaning, and polishing. And she never received one word of thanks. One day, as Rosemary rested, her stepmother appeared as angry as ever. I have a task for you, you lazy girl, she cried. She handed Rosemary a sieve. Take this sieve and go to the well at the world's end. There, fill it with water and bring it back without spilling a drop. Do not return here without it. Rosemary left early the next morning. Her stepmother smiled when she heard the door shut and then went back to sleep. Oh, Rosemary did not know what to do, for she had no idea where the well of the world's end was. She had not dared to ask her stepmother for fear of being punished. Then she saw the goat herd in the field. Surely he would know of the well. When Rosemary asked him if he knew the well, for she wished to fill her sieve there, he just looked at her strangely and said, I know it not. Poor Rosemary walked sadly on, while the goat herd looked after her as though she were quite mad. Rosemary walked on until she met some schoolboys in the road. Do you know the well of the world's end? She asked. I want to fill my sieve there. The boys just laughed at Rosemary, thinking she was soft in the head. Poor, unhappy Rosemary.
Then she came to a smithy. Surely the blacksmith would have heard of the well. But when Rosemary asked him, he had never heard of it. Poor Rosemary. What was she going to do? She could not return home. As she journeyed on, she asked people along the way, but none of them had heard of the well. And they all looked at her strangely when she said she wished to fill her sieve there. Soon, Rosemary came to a forest. She'd never been so far from home before, and she felt quite lost and frightened. She dared not return home without the water, for she knew her stepmother would beat her hard if she did. So on and on she walked, deeper and deeper into the forest, looking everywhere for the well. Oh, where could it be? She stopped and looked about her. Slowly, her fear began to disappear. She wasn't alone anymore. All about her in the forest, she saw birds and animals. If only they could speak, they could tell her where to find the well. She walked on. She mustn't give up. She must keep going. She was beginning to feel very tired and weary. Just as she was giving up hope of ever finding the well, she caught sight of someone moving in the trees. She hurried down into the dell. And there she found an old woman poking at the ground with a stick. The old woman had dropped two coins in the mud and it was all the money she had in the world. Rosemary's nimble fingers soon found the coins. And she happily gave them back to the grateful old woman Then Rosemary ventured to ask, do you know the well of the world's end? Much to her surprise, the old woman nodded and pointed off into the forest. Go through the thickets, she cackled, and walk on a ways till you come to the fallen tree. Rosemary was so happy, she set off right away. As she walked through the thickets, the old woman called after her. After the fallen tree, go left and climb a ways, and there you'll find the well. Rosemary waved a thank you, and on she went. Bravely, she walked on into the thickest, deepest part of the forest. <laughs> Was she lost? No. 
there was the fallen tree. She struggled on up the steep slope. What had the old woman said? Climb a ways and there you'll find the well. Oh, she did hope the old woman was right. Then she saw it, the well of the world's end. She was overjoyed. At last she would be able to fill her sieve and return home. She peered over the wall, down into the well. Down, down, far below, she could see the water ripple. Slowly, she pulled up the heavy bucket. Her stepmother could not be angry with her now. Now she'd found the water. But as she poured the well water into the sieve, of course it ran straight through the holes. Poor oh, Rosemary was very unhappy. She must fill the sieve or she could not go home. Again she tried, but again the water ran straight through. The task was impossible. Poor Rosemary was so unhappy she began to cry. I can't go home, she thought. Oh, what shall I do? Suddenly she heard a deep croak. And there on the wall was a large toad. Tell me your tale of woe, croaked the toad. So Rosemary told the toad how she must take a sieve full of the well water back to her stepmother. How she could not return home unless she did this. And how impossible it was to fill the sieve. I will help you the toad. If you promise to do anything I ask. Rosemary nodded eagerly. So the toad crept close to Rosemary's ear and croaked. Fill it with moss and daub it with clay, then you may carry the water away. Just to make sure she understood, the toad croaked Fill it with moss and daub it with clay, then you may carry the water away. Of course, thought Rosemary, and swiftly she took some moss from the wall and lined the sieve with it. The toad watched while she dug out some clay and patted it down over the moss. the sieve was ready, Rosemary got up. Would it work? She so hoped that it would. And it did. Not one drop of water ran out. Oh, thank you, cried Rosemary, and she bent to kiss the toad. Now don't forget that on this day, you made me a promise to do as I say, croaked the toad. Rosemary turned and cried, I won't, dear toad. Then away she went, for she did not want to keep her stepmother waiting. Rosemary walked slowly and carefully through the forest, for she did not want to trip on a root or log and spill the precious well water. As she walked slowly on, she saw a fox among the bushes. He looked so bright and friendly, Rosemary laughed and told him how happy she was to have found the well, and how she was sure her stepmother would be pleased with her. 
Rosemary was sure the fox understood. On and on she walked. At last, she left the forest and was soon back in the fields close to her village. Though she was tired and hungry, she was very happy she'd done what her stepmother wanted. She carried the sieve carefully into the house. And when Rosemary handed her the sieve full of well water, just as she asked, she was so furious that she flung the sieve straight out of the door. Poor Rosemary was once more set to work. She spent her days cooking, cleaning, and polishing. She worked hard and never complained, but sometimes she did wonder if her misery would ever end. Then one evening, as she was preparing supper, there came a gentle tap-tap at the door. Answer it, snapped her stepmother. So Rosemary went to the door. She looked out into the darkness. Who's there? She called. No one answered. Her stepmother, ever suspicious, came over to the door. Just then, a voice was heard to croak. Let me in, O oh heart of gold. Remember your promise by the water so cold. And there, on the doorstep, was the toad. Rosemary's stepmother screamed and ran away when she saw the toad. Get rid of that horrible creature, she cried. But Rosemary could not, for the toad had been so kind to her, and she had promised. Disobeying her stepmother, she brought the toad into the house as her stepmother fled into the bedroom. And through the crack in the door, she cried out, If that creature is not gone by morning, I shall punish you hard. Although Rosemary was frightened of her stepmother, she could not desert her friend the toad. She would give him shelter, even though she would pay dearly for it in the morning. After giving him food, she settled down to watch over the toad and make sure no harm came to him. How nice it was to have a friend at last, she thought. She stroked the toad. Her eyes began to droop she was very, very tired and could stay awake no longer. She was woken the next morning by a hand touching hers. As she looked up, who should be sitting there but a handsome young prince? I must be dreaming, thought Rosemary, starting back. The prince smiled at her. Who are you? she cried. Do not fear, Rosemary said the prince. I am a prince who a wicked enchantress turned into a toad. Her evil spell could only be undone when a young girl showed that she cared for me, just as you have done. Just then, the door swung open and in walked Rosemary's stepmother. 
I am taking Rosemary away with me, said the prince coldly, and you shall ill-treat her no longer. And the prince offered Rosemary his hand. Rosemary's stepmother was so surprised that she just stood and stared and never uttered a word. The prince took Rosemary away from her hard, unhappy life back to his castle. He showed her all the land he possessed, which he would now share with her. Rosemary married her prince. And being a kind, forgiving girl, she invited her stepmother to the wedding, but her stepmother never came. Some people say she changed her ways and became kind-hearted in her old age. Others say that she's still standing there, dumbstruck, just the way she was when Rosemary left. No matter, for Rosemary and her prince lived on together very happily. <laughs>